guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to be talking about color tokens and tokenization in Figma. So if you're not following me on LinkedIn or Twitter, definitely go follow me there as well, because I recently posted a carousel, which I'm going to be talking about and demonstrating or actually looking at right now. So the carousel is something like this, which you can have a look at it right now. So I'm, we're going to talk about the type of tokens. So we have primitive tokens, we have semantic tokens, and we have component tokens. So let's just have a look at that example right in front of us. Well, first of all, I'm just going to detach all of the tokens that I have here. So we don't have any tokens here. And then I have a bunch of local variables created. So these are primitive tokens. Primitive tokens are just referencing the hex value and they are defined like P50, P75, P100, P200. Similarly for neutrals, N50, N75. These can also start from N100, N200. It doesn't really matter. But primitive tokens are usually used to define the base colors of the design system or the application or the website, whatever it is. But one problem that you see here with the primitive tokens, and let me just actually have show show them to you as well. But even before that, even before that, let's just go, go to our semantic token. So I have semantic tokens created here as well. Now, as you can see, these are semantic tokens that are referencing the primitive values. So that's exactly what happens. So you have a hex value, you apply that hex value to a primitive token. The primitive token value is then being referenced by surface primary and these are component level tokens which can actually inherit the uh, semantic token value now what is tokenization tokenization is basically the fact of where we reference one value uh, to the other where for example in the border default value we're actually referencing another token so that's basically what tokenization is so how do people normally use these color tokens? Well, people used to use, and they still, some people still use like primitives. Some people use semantic tokens and some people use component tokens. And before we talk about what the best way is, it's important to understand these tokens themselves. So I've already explained what primitive tokens are. These are just values like these. Let's just go to our primitives collection. Values like these where a hex value is actually attached to a number and the the primary or the neutral or something along those lines an alphabet from that particular thing as well and i mean that's how we used to do it back in the days when figma did not have variables that was working for us obviously it was limited as well and what are the limitations of using primitive tokens well the first one is inconsistency the the mere fact that if i'm applying a button color here right if i'm applying let's say a sir a background here that's going to be something like this now imagine i have another component that's going to use a very similar uh, background but i don't really know what that background was like it's really hard for me to remember that this background is like primary 400 or primary 300 so it can result in inconsistency if especially if you have a large color design system you either have to keep on double checking the values which is obviously going to be encounter maintenance challenges and it's going to obviously reduce your productivity but it's also, it can also result in inconsistency where different designers or you yourself are making mistakes using the color values and not choosing the correct variables. Similarly, you obviously don't have any context as to how these colors actually apply. So for example, if we go here, like when should I use primary 300? When should I use primary 400 or 500, primary 50? I have no freaking clue, which is exactly the problem with primitives. The other way to do things is to use semantic tokens. Now, semantic tokens are a really great problem solver for this because they actually express function and intent in their naming. So for example, if we go to our primary tokens, actually let's just open the local variables and switch to the semantic uh, collection. We have border variables, we have text variables, we have surface variables. Now, if I wanted to apply a background to the surface, as you can see, this is our primary button. So we're gonna go ahead and say that this should use the primary semantic token. So we can just say primary. Similarly, we see that a bunch of borders are being applied here. I can just select all three, three buttons. I can go here and I can say, this is going to be the border default. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff. We have some text here. We can obviously just say white or we can go to our text value and we can say, we don't have a text value defined. So we can just go ahead and say text minus white or something along those lines. So that's completely, that's a mistake on my end. But now we have some help text. We need to define this help text so we can go to the text placeholder or text minus help. And as you can see, it's already done. We have something like this. It's gonna be a placeholder text. So we can say text minus placeholder. So that's the benefit of semantic tokens actually because it helps with consistency. 
the naming and the context and the intention itself is defined in the token itself, it's easier to maintain, obviously. Why is it easy to maintain? Well, <clears throat> Imagine I have a bunch of different borders being used in different places. Now, for example, I'm going to go here and I'm also going to define a border here. Now, this is going to use our border uh, default. Now, these three buttons were also using border default. This input field is also using border default right now. Imagine you have a design system with 20 components using border default, but you decide maybe somewhere sometime in the future that I don't really like how sharp this border default is maybe I want it to be light. So if you can just go here and change this to N50, like maybe a lighter border, that's gonna update on all of your components. Obviously, once you publish this change, it's gonna update on different components. However, imagine if you were using a primitive value here. If I go here and I was using the primitive value uh, N75 individually on each component, now, obviously, I don't want to go ahead and update this N75. I actually want to go ahead and change the N75 to N50 on all of these 20 components. I wouldn't be able to do so. I would have to go individually to each specific component, select them and change the value of N75 to N50. But now I can easily just go ahead and do those changes directly by going to going here and changing the border default, which actually saves us a lot of time. It's easy to maintain the consistency is there, the context is there, is there an alignment with business logic is really important as well. So imagine when you're creating a flow or when you're creating something, maybe a new designer comes in. Now, if you want something to be highlighted, you can say this is surface primary. So a button um, and something an input field being focused or something along those lines anything that you want to take attention that can actually be that similarly with the link as well if i want to have a link i should use this color as well so i mean it basically helps quite loud a lot now coming to component tokens so component tokens is another way but it's a lot of work so for example what we can actually create our component tokens right now so i'm going to say these are going to be our component tokens now imagine I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create another variable. I'm gonna say this is going to be our BTN minus BG. And I'm gonna link this to what? To our semantic token surface primary. Similarly, I'm gonna create another. And if you actually just wanna create variables directly by going here, you can just press shift, enter, enter, and it's gonna create in something else. So I can say this is going to be our button color, which is basically the text color. And I can say, okay, this text color is going to use a color text minus white. And I don't want to reference the primitive, so I'm just going to quickly go to our semantic tokens. I'm going to define the colors here. So I'm going to say there's this is going to be text minus white. And let's just go ahead and give this a white color. There you go. And I can then go to our component tokens and I can say this is going to be white, text minus white, so on and so forth. However, the problem with this particular thing is imagine if you have a huge component library, like 50 components, imagine doing this exact same thing for all those 50 or 49 other components. It's going to be a lot of headache. It's going to be quite hard to maintain and it defeats the purpose as well, because if I don't do this for every single component, then why would I apply the button BG value to different components like tags or something along those lines? Wouldn't it make sense to actually have a generic naming convention like surface minus primary and then apply it to the specific components, which is exactly why I suggest to stick with semantic tokens. So definitely the pros of using component tokens is also consistency. It's much more addict context because it's specifically referencing uh, the component itself. But coming to the cons, it's very hard to maintain. It's over-engineering, it increases the complexity, and then it has a huge learning curve as well because anytime you're basically creating a new component, you probably have to create new component tokens for that as well. So my recommendation is to use semantic tokens like surface minus primary and stuff along those lines. One thing that I do wanna point out is I was thinking of actually just posting this video to my uh, <clears throat> course but i thought like this would be a great marketing opportunity as well to market my course as well because i'm basically going into details like this in my course explaining why certain things are used what the best practices are and which way you should go forward with it apart from that i have a huge community on discord where you can ask me questions directly we can have zoom calls as well and if you're stuck anywhere in figma or in your design career or something along those lines i and my team would be happy to help you there so yeah, that's pretty much it. Do subscribe to hit the bell icon and I'll be glad to see you inside my course. And the link is going to be in the description. Take care. Bye.